Good afternoon and half a day. The Committee on Health, Land, Justice and Culture is now called to order. Today's Monday, November 14, 2022, and the time is about 2.09 p.m. In compliance with the Open Government Law, notice for this public hearing was sent, was published in the Guam Daily Post on Friday, November 4, and on Thursday, November 10, 2022, and posted to the Government of Guam Public Notice Portal. Notices were also disseminated via email to all senators and all main media broadcasting outlets. There's only one agenda item today, and that is the reappointment of Arlene P. Berdalia to serve as a member Chamorro Land Trust Commission for a term length of three years, from April 11, 2022 to April 10, 2025. Individuals testifying shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking and begin by stating their name for record keeping purposes. All right, so this would be Arlene P. Berdalio's second term, if confirmed, to the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. At her previous appointment hearing, we went over the history of the land trust and how many years it had taken since it was uh, enacted, uh, sponsored by the late Senator Paul Berdalio, who was the author of the Chamorro Land Trust Act. That was in 1975. The act was passed unanimously by the 12th Guam Legislature. After about 20 years, it was not implemented until Inoshon Chamorro, under the leadership of Defunto Senator Angel Santos and Defunto Megatlahi Ed Beneventi and their wives, and many others, led an education and advocacy campaign urging the governor at that time to implement the trust. The governor refused to implement, and a suit was filed by attorneys Mike Phillips, Michael Bordalio, and myself. This was a pro bono lawsuit without fees on behalf of Angel Santos and Nashon Chamorro to compel implementation of the act. The AG at that time had argued that the trust was unconstitutional. A hearing was held at the same time that hundreds led a protest and camp out on the grounds of Adeloupe. A decision was made in 1992 by then Judge Benjamin Cruz that the law was valid and ordered the governor to implement the act and appoint the first commissioners. Several years later in 1995, when Angel Santos was a senator, he introduced the rules and regulations for the trust. Those were adopted at the time and uh, of course have been amended slightly over the years. The Chamorro Land Trust Commission is responsible for the disposition of what was then termed Chamorro homelands, pursuant to mandates to advance the social, cultural, and economic development and well-being of the Chamorro people by way of residential, agricultural, and commercial land distribution and economic assistance programs. In the settlement of the lawsuit for the case Chamorro Land Trust Commission in United States of America versus Government of Guam, Chamorro Land Trust Commission and Administrative Director of the Chamorro Land Trust, CV 17-00113. The commission found that the proposed modifications or amendments to the Chamorro Land Trust Act and the rules and regulations of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission would more clearly demonstrate that the Chamorro Land Trust program is a land restoration program meant to rectify the unjust taking of Chamorro homelands by the United States federal government between 1898 and 1968, and would expand the program's eligible beneficiaries to include individuals and their descendants who owned land or who ranched, farmed, or otherwise occupied the lands that were taken. <clears throat> On May 29, 2020, after further settlement negotiations, the settlement agreement was signed by the Chamorro Land Trust Commission and Imagahagan Guahan, which resolved the allegations contained in the lawsuit. In it, the government of Guam did not admit liability and denied that the Chamorro Land Trust Act violated the Fair Housing Act. 
The 35th Guam Legislature passed Bill 419-35, now Public Law 35-112, to approve the settlement. Subsequently, changes to the Senator Paul Bordalia rules and regulations for Chamorro Land Trust Commission were made to assure the CLTC compliance with Public Law 35-112 and the settlement agreement between the United States of America and Government of Guam, Chamorro Land Trust Commission, and Administrative Director of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. It is the Commission's mission to carry on any activities necessary to inform and assist in obtaining maximum utilization of lands, including development of lands to their highest and best use in all phases of residential and agricultural leasing and commercial leasing. For the record, for today's confirmation hearing, we have received written testimony from the chairman of the current, the current chairman of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission, Mr. John Rages Jr. in favor and support In part, he says, Commissioner Berdalio is committed and dedicated in fulfilling the intent of the trust, despite its many challenges over the years. She continues to carry on the work of her, her late husband, who took action to secure land rights and was the author of the Chamorro Land Trust Act. She has demonstrated her commitment and importance in attending the monthly commission meetings, despite being off island for a medical procedure. Her business acumen provides the expertise needed in dealing with complex decisions tasked by the Commission. She has the passion and motivation to ensure we continue moving forward with our strategic plan and awarding long-awaited leases. I humbly ask the committees and senators support for the reappointment of Commissioner Berdalio to the Chamorro Land Trust so we can continue to restore the trust of our people in the Commission. Sidzuis Masi, John Regis, Jr. So we'll now hear from the nominee herself, Ms. Berdalio, if you would like to present testimony. Please turn on the microphone. Just in the middle, there's a button. Okay, no. thank you. That's good. Yeah. Sorry, one more time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Speaker Therese Tulahi. Thank you for... Uh, giving me the opportunity to get my reappointment in the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. Half a day to yourself, Senators Sabina Paris, member of the Committee on Health, Land, Justice, and Culture, and Senators of the Legislatura Guahan, and my fellow Guamanians. I am here before you today, humbly asking your support for another term as a member of the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. Commission Inan Gon Tanu Chamorro. The work of the commission is vitally important to the people of Guam in readdressing the historic injustice of the land takings by the U.S. government from the last century. And I wish to continue contributing to this readdressing effort as a member of the commission. I have come to appreciate the dedication and hard work of my fellow members and the staff. Much work lies ahead, but the work that we have accomplished so far makes me brim from optimism and pride that the people of Guam have an ever-nurturing homeland, safe and secure for future generations. Once again, I humbly ask for your approval of my renewal of my appointment. Thank you, Zen Sidus Maasi, Arlene Bardalia. 
Mr. Dalio, and also for your service from the previous term uh, on this commission. And I know that it's uh, been some tough work. They have very long meetings on this commission. Uh, so I want to just, um, so part of the nomination packet shows your, uh, you know, kind of resume, and I'm just going to read excerpts of it. So received Bachelor of Business Administration degree at the University of Guam in 1980. Currently the president of Marianas Finance since 2007. Formerly the vice president for Marianas Finance Company, Inc. and Marianas Boats and Motors. Former member and chairperson of the Port Authority of Guam Board of Directors. Former member of the Guam Economic Development Authority Board of Directors. Member and former officer, Seroptimus International of Guam. President of the Guam Women's Council of the Guam Council of Women's Clubs, um, prior president, and presently a member of the Guam Women's Club. And again, so this would be your second term to this commission, and these terms uh, look like they are, sorry, three years. So this would be a three-year term. And all right, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions for the record, and do you have any continuing business or other conflicts of interest that may affect your ability to perform your duties as a commissioner? I have no... Uh, um, I just want to make a correction. The company that I run is Family Finance Company. Not Mariana. Not Mariana's Finance. Yes. Family Finance. Yes, sorry. My apologies. Thank you for co that correction. And um, all right, will there be any challenges to you attending commission meetings? Not right now, to my ability. I am okay for now. Okay, great. Um, As a returning member to the commission, what are some of the things that you hope to accomplish in the next three years? Well, you know, we have about 100 uh, applicants that we have to go through. And I hope that, you know, the uh, department accomplishes, you know, what we have to do to take care of those uh, clients. Why do you say a hundred applicants? These are the ones that were put as, you know, we have to go through them, the application. Those are the next 100? Yeah. Well, that's the first 100 that first one. was not approved. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, it's been a while now since uh, the commission has had a permanent administrative director. And uh, I wanted to know, so we have right now an acting administrative director. What are your thoughts on having a permanent administrative director and, and the commission moving forward with hiring one? This is something not, that, that doesn't go through the legislature strictly on the commission and the commissioners to appoint one. How, how do you see this? I, I would like to see an administrator appointed as soon as possible. All right. Are you able to advocate that for that on your board? That there's a search that yes. That a search be made or yes. whatever steps the board wants yes. to do. Um, what is the status of the CLTC offices in the ITC building? They're under, uh, I don't know what the, uh, the arrangement is as far as being there, whether they're under land management's lease, I'm not too sure. Is it your understanding that the offices are still open? To my knowledge. Our office has received reports that uh, the phones are not being answered. Is, 
Are you aware of anything about phones? As far as the, um, the management of the office, I'm not too... F I'm not too aware of. All right. As far as the operation. Well, yeah, you should be aware that we receive many phone calls in our office regarding the Chamorro Land Trust. I would say those are the number one amount of calls that I receive. So there are complaints from phones not being answered. There are questions. Right. Yes. So we get complaints regarding the phone calls not being answered. And I know it's not your job. This is an administrative job, but the commissioners directly supervise the director, the acting director and the staff. Um, so according to the statute, it's the commissioners, the commission itself that's authorized to hire the administrative director. And so it's phone calls. It's um, not getting answers to their particular questions when they do reach someone, uh, like no, no responses on their particular cases. Of course, we have a lot of complaints regarding the, the void, the ones that were deemed years ago by the Attorney yes. General to be void, the leases, and, and apparently staff at the commission has been telling people whenever they have an issue with that, oh, you have to call the legislature or something like this. And I don't know where they're getting that direction. And I am asking you as a board member to please uh, correct that. Because this is, uh, you know, well, you guys have the authority to deal with those well, things. That's very important to have a manage manager to manage the office. So I'm sorry to hear that, that uh, they're th throwing the the problems to, to the, the Guam legislature. So that, are, that is why in order to have an administrator, not as an acting, the person has to be responsible for the operation of Chamorro Land Trust. Okay, so there's an October 25, 2022 article in the Daily Post that says the Chamorro Land Trust Commission office at ITC has been closed due to inoperable air conditioning system and the presence of mold. And these issues postponed the regularly scheduled meeting that was supposed to take place on October 20th. Um, Staff are assigned to the Department of Land Management and the Guam Ancestral Lands Commission until it is safe to return to the CLTC office. I will follow up with the acting director on that, but I just wanted to know if you were aware of these things when they happen, if well, there's any impediment to them getting that taken care of. That October 20th meeting, I was only aware of it by the published uh, article, you know, saying there's a meeting. I didn't learn about the mold in the building or that particular office until the following day or two when it was in the newspaper. Oh, my goodness. So I was not aware of that. I don't go into the office to try to manage mm -hmm. their operation. I strictly come to my meetings yeah. on the days that I am Supposed that makes to. sense, but you know, we just, I think the commissioner should be aware of what's going on because when you have meetings and you're dealing with complaints, you should be aware of everything that those people have been facing as well. Well, like I said, the administrator should inform us. I don't get any information, only my packet on 
one week before the meeting time. So I don't know what goes in the, okay. in the office. Um. All right, so I'm going to ask you now, this one is in regards to mineral extraction. At, the previous, at your previous confirmation hearing, you testified that if there was a need for mineral extraction, that it should be a legislative decision to make. Yes. And that um, we knew at the time that the 34th Guam legislature passed Public Law 34-142, which authorized a new lease for the Guam Racing Federation up to 50 years but prohibited mineral extraction. But we now see that in lieu of negotiating a new lease under the new terms, um, they were allowed to continue under the old lease all this time. And apparently it looks to us from testimony in a previous hearing showing photos that mineral extraction continues on Chamorro Land Trust properties. Um, what was, became issues at the time or what was questioned was the permitting from DPW accounting for the royalties over extraction and backfilling after the fact. Um, I think there was a uh, notice to cease issued by the um, acting director but I'm not aware of anything that has transpired after that. Um, it says to remedy the unauthorized use of CLTC property by Smithbridge, they offered to pay 51 cents per linear foot. Uh, if the total would um, going forward and escape assessment fee of 64,000, that they offered to pay this amount going forward an escape assessment fee of 64,000 some for 69 months of prior use. And so going forward, it would be a $935. That's our estimates of settlement. Have you discussed this matter as a board? Is, is uh, that has not come up to us. The Smith bridge settlement has yeah, not. Yeah. All right. And, um, the mineral extraction, that I know as the law, but uh, as far as who did it, I, I'm not too sure. Okay. I'm not aware. All right, so there was several years ago when there was, um, I would say a big, um, um, crisis at the Chamorro Land Trust where the, the chairperson at the time decided to do a review of all the leases to decide which ones were determined by the commissioners, the board versus mm -hmm. just the director, which ones were in compliance with the law, which ones had uh, jumped the line which ones were exceeding the amount authorized by law or by the commissioners, all those things. And so they came up with lists at that time, this was years ago, that said um, kind of conforming and non-conforming. So we have some non-conforming and some of those, uh, I, I believe the AG said, could be made uh, conforming. Some of those, the, the attorney general for the commissioners said, were void, had to be where they were deemed void. But it looks to me now that the commission, when I review your minutes, is going again over some people that were already determined conforming 
and making new determinations mm -hmm. now, years later, that they're non-conforming again. And this is causing huge, like another crisis right. for the Chamorro Land Trust because nobody's ending up with any security and, you know, putting investment into these properties. And I'm sure you know the hardship because they come to your meetings and they describe this. Um, do you support overturning prior decisions, you know, or, yeah, that where they deemed these properties conforming and then years later? Non-conforming? Yeah. Those should be uh, taken up, uh, brought to the board to either uh, discontinue their leases. Yeah, uh, if they constantly uh, ignore, you know, the uh, the rules, then they should cut uh, them out. Okay, thank you. The, there's an article in the PDN published on in October that noted that the CLTC was going to consider a resolution asking the legislature to allow for line swaps so the leasing can resume. I just want to know what is your interpretation of the proposed rule on this and how do you see this process being implemented? Well, uh, Speaker, we have to follow the rules on, on the law that uh, the legislature has put up mm -hmm. and we'll follow that. That's all I can say. But it, it sounds like the commission has uh, decided that it is in favor of line swaps and wants the legislature to approve those? Uh, normally, I would take that up with the illegal okay. and get his opinion before a decision is made. All right. Well, the article makes it sound like a decision was made. So, I see. All right. Maybe I'll call a hearing just for that then, yes. if that's the case. Um, I have not received any formal letters from the Chamorro Land Trust requesting that. I only read it in the, their minutes that that's what they are asking the legislature. Okay. There's a resolution up for consideration to delegate certain authorities to the administrative director. This resolution gives authority to the director to authenticate and sign on behalf of the commission, licenses, leases, loan contracts, personnel actions, procurement and purchase forms, contracts with other governmental agencies and commission resolutions and having full charge of and responsibility for the administration and execution of all actions approved by the commission and in effectuating commission policy. It also gives authority to the director to approve eligible beneficiaries to Chamorro Land Trust Commission in accordance to the eligibility requirements as it states on Chapter 75A and on the standard operating procedures. Do you think this means that the director is going to approve these things and then they will not be proposed in front of the commission? Or the director approves based on commission's action? Things should be approved by the commission. Okay. Well, the reason why I'm asking is because remember when that crisis happened at, uh -huh. it's several years ago, that was one of the main findings was that the director was acting without commission approval on many leases in many regards and, and that became the new operating procedure that that would not happen anymore, that everything was going to come before the commission. I'm sure it can be streamlined and expedited in different ways, but that the leases for sure should be approved by the commission, for sure. Yes. yes. Okay. All right, so I don't know if you're aware when we were... Um, in the budget hearings and we had an oversight hearing of the Chamorro Land Trust, one of the things we talked about was 
you know, which tracts of land were they going to concentrate on, which big tracts subdivide and issue out new leases on. Uh, you know, I'm looking for this because there are other tracts that were somewhat issued or divided, but there's, because of the way it was done, have so many problems, right? So yeah. I'm looking for these new tracts to be divided and issued out some new leases, and uh, it's really not happened. And so, uh, so we've tried to ensure that if they can prioritize which tracts of land can be divided, either because there's infrastructure in the area, those would be priority, or then we could fund the infrastructure to the area or prioritize bringing infrastructure in one when you get the revenue from the submerged cables, right? Yeah. So, yeah, do, do you foresee these well, types of projects happening? In that, the that is the direction that they were supposed to do. So yeah. as far as the work being done, I don't know where they're at right now because supposedly they were supposed to get some federal funding for infrastructure or whatever is, uh, you know, allowed. All right. I would ask, um, since this is your second term on the board, if you could help me in being, you know, in really urging to see regular reports on this, regular status updates, regular progress, and really pushing the progress. And if there's any impediment that it be brought to whoever's attention is necessary, mine, the governor's, anyone, so that we can get over those impediments as soon as possible. These are, these are to lease out lands that are next to available infrastructure, divide them up, you know, and divide them up in a suitable way where, where there's access and we don't have any of those problems that we have on so many of these older lots. Right. Yeah. So I'm hoping if you could please um, just, you know, I know it's not your job to do daily, but I think the board, the commissioners play a huge role in really urging the directors and the staff to, you know, keep on focus on, yeah. on that. And I would like to see those new leases being issued, new lots being subdivided, infrastructure being accessible. Um, while we continue to deal with all the problem areas, I just don't want to get stuck dealing only with the problem areas and then these new leases are not being issued. Yes. I think we can do both at the same time. And, you know, we've got families leaving every day because of non-affordable housing. And this is our way to make, you know, to yes. give them access to affordable housing. So I feel that's, like it's a rush for me. That's very true, uh, Speaker. People are leaving our island. And it's sad because the housing market has gone up. And I don't know how our Chamorro people are going to s survive living in Guam. That's definitely a problem here. And uh, I hope that, that the, the Chamorro Land Trust staff see that this is a crisis right now. Our people are leaving, and it's sad. And that's, you know, the idea that Chamorro Land Trust is for the poor people that can't afford to own land. And it's just so sad. And it's, we have to work harder. The staff has to work harder to get this thing done so that people don't leave us. Thank you. I, I hope you can continue to urge them. Uh, it takes, you know, it takes all of us to continue to urge and to point out and to see the progress, to praise the progress. Yeah. And, um, and to keep reminding us all, you know, I think yeah. we could all use the reminder of the yeah. reality, right? right? While we're in a, a meeting or even in here, the reality is not necessarily in our face, but, you know, you know it yeah. uh, in the industry that you're in. I'm sure you see this, that this, the struggle that people are going through. So 
we did uh, in our budget, and I think we did fine last budget, and I think this one too continued to to try to increase the level a little bit for additional staffing, and that yeah. was supposed to be yeah to help to concentrate on these projects. Right. All right. I see your concern, uh, speaker, and. I do want to see that done. Thank you. Then we'll work together. Yes, and uh, sometimes just call on a work session okay. for you, the staff and also the directors, board of directors. All right. There's, um, you've been following the commercial leases and I know that uh, in the past there were issues with collections. Um, yes. Some issues were just way too low valuations, I think. Yeah. And so, of course, there was not enough money coming in to even cover operations, let alone right. to get infrastructure in. So I'm really hoping with some of the changes that we're making, increasing the values of these commercial leases, that the board will do its part to ensure that, you know, the accounting that you listen to it every week or whenever, yes. every month, and you, you, you ensure that no one's getting too far behind that we're, the government or the people are going to lose out or right. that no one is, um, no other deals are being made that the, the commission's not aware of or that, and that we're getting value. So some of these don't come through us. They, they're only on your table. And I'm asking you to reconsider the valuation of these properties. It's, um, we were able to increase the value, for example, of submerged lands from $10,000 or in one case, $5,000. The other one was proposed $10,000. We increased that to $100,000 per cable, which would mean $600,000. That's the difference in the valuation. And so I'm asking you, you're the businesswoman on this, to push for the higher valuations of, com of commercial properties. Yes. If they need it, and this is an ideal location for them, then, then hopefully you will be able to push for those higher values. So I would ask the commission's entire cooperation in trying to do that because, yeah, the more money, the money for the submerged cables, for example, is going directly to infrastructure. But, you know, our needs for infrastructure, those are overwhelming, so. Very expensive. Okay. The, um, all right, I've already talked to you about the constituent concerns. They also said, um, there's also a problem with surveys. So I think this is a problem. Some of these uh, constituents or the Chamorro Land Trust lessees have been told to go and survey their own properties. S um, some of these are not getting approvals. Some of these um, surveys, actually this, this has affected everybody on Guam. Some of the surveyors have passed away before the maps were approved. And so yes. those people who had paid are kind of in a dilemma now of right. how. We're hoping, right, with the infrastructure money, it's called the Survey and Infrastructure Fund. Okay. And we are hoping, you know, that tomorrow Lantris, we had talked years ago about hiring surveyors, right? So that we could survey at our own costs, you know, as men, much property as possible, subdivide as much as possible. But I know that for the past few years, the Chamorro Land Trust and the Guam uh, Department of Land Management have mm -hmm. actually shared teams when it comes to surveying. There's not enough people, I guess, yeah. certified for independent teams. Yeah. And so the work is kind of um, take turns, I guess, is a good way to describe it, but it's not full force for the Chamorro Land Trust in particular. So this is an issue. I've talked to Guam Community College about, you know, increasing the courses that for, under this uh, work work programs for surveying technicians, right. but uh, we re but it's uh, getting those engineers the, cert the certified. Yes. 
that still is an issue. So we're trying to get uh, more interest in it at the you know, college level so that more people can go into this field. It's high demand right now. Definitely. Yeah. So that I can understand why there may be delays, but if you could please um, also just, you know, continue to hear the reports on that and continue to hear whether your Tomorrowland Trust work is being, you know, equally prioritized, I guess, when we're sharing duties. Or, you know, if it's going to be put aside, please find out why, when, and, you know, how are we going to justify that to those that are waiting? You know, if, if we've never, I've never seen an RFP put out for surveyors, for example, to, you know, maybe that has happened, I just haven't seen it. But just uh, maybe a creative thinking on, on the commission's part or, or the, you know, staff, how to get more land survey faster or to resolve those pending surveys that are still pending. All right. Um, of course, we still have violations of land use by the lessees, right? They're, they're using their land in violation. They're, um, this is still an issue. And so I know that this has been before the commissioners of, you know, who's going to do this enforcement, how often, right? And, and the assistance that you need to get that done. And, if, and the other part of that is it's uh, using your property in ways that are not allowed. That's one. Second, for example, is uh, ensuring that those who have agricultural leases comply with the terms of the agriculture. And then third, the big one is this illegal dumping. So unfortunately, the Tomorrow Land Trust, where there's vacant lands or adjacent to leases, there's a, a lot of illegal dumping. And I know that, you know, EPA, they've gone in, tried to clean it up, but ultimately, yeah, this is a problem for the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. I know we've talked about solutions of um, island-wide, how to take care of illegal dumping by providing trash services. The other one I could only think of was, you know, if it's private property, sometimes they put up fences to prevent the illegal dumping. This could be done perhaps on some Chamor land trust, but it would take money away from surveying the land right. and doing the other things, bringing in real infrastructure as opposed to putting up fences. So, so I know, you know, those are still issues still being debated, but I just, I just don't want you to lose sight. Yeah, because the, the illegal dumping, if there's a way that they can come up with, that would be great. I know that EPA did say at one hearing that they had put up cameras, but that was not a viable solution for them because the cameras always got vandalized or stolen. So they don't rely on those anymore. I don't know. So this is a, this is continues to be another tomorrow land trust commission issue that just needs to be addressed. And I know there's a lot of them, but yeah. still one. Okay. Do you have any other, um, are you feel free uh, and, uh, as a commission member to suggest ways of, uh, different ways of dealing with things that they've been dealing with? I do some suggestions, but you know, I don't know if they come through with it. All right. All right, well, I'm gonna just urge you one more time, yeah. To get into the details, if you have to, with the, with the director, so that, uh, you know, maybe you would be able to advise them on some other things to try. You know, some of these we know from past years are not working, and we need to look for other solutions. So, yeah, each member, I think, of the commission is really important in that way, in that they bring in their own eyes and their own experience and, and their own suggestions so that, so that, you know, the experience of the director and the staff is expanded by that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to thank you for your willingness to serve again on this commission. Again, I know that the meetings of this commission are very long because they deal with general policies and then they get into constituent or lessee matters, particular right. leases. And those who are coming to you asking for commercial leases, lots of matters on one agenda. 
and this happens regularly. Right. I think at one point they were even doubling up their meetings twice a month because there was so much work that they had to get done. And I can see the agendas, they continue to be full of resolving old problems, you know, new problems, and then, you know, try and make some progress in the long run. So I'm grateful for your service and I, I want to encourage you to please don't be discouraged and continue to, to give them your experience because you really do have experience in some of these areas and the reality. Yeah. Keep reminding all of us about the reality that, that the people of Guam are facing and why it's urgent, why this work is urgent. I want to thank you for um, yeah, reminding us, of course, of you know, the purpose of the trust and you know, that we have to stay diligent and deliberative uh, as to its success uh, and the goal of issuing residential leases, I think, should yeah. be paramount. And I want to thank you for your support of that. So, Sidus Masi, Ms. Bredalio, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to your swift confirmation. And there being no additional individuals to present testimony, this committee will consider this uh, confirmation duly heard. So the public hearing is now adjourned and the time is 2.55 p.m. Thank you.